Hello everyone, AM Harbinger here, and I just completed Sonic Frontiers, so this is going to be my review for it, and let's talk about it. So, Sonic Frontiers. It's a good Sonic game. If you're a Sonic fan, you're going to definitely enjoy this Sonic game. Now, is it the best 3D Sonic ever made? Absolutely not. I still think that's Sonic Generations, and I think a large portion of the Sonic community would agree with that. I know a lot of people hold Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2, even Sonic Unleashed, to high regard, but I think Sonic Generations is definitely the best of the game. Now, Sonic Frontiers. So, uh, the first uh, elephant in the room, how is the open world? So, there are five technically open worlds. I wouldn't constitute one of them as an open world because it's just there to serve as a progressive blocker for story reasons. It doesn't really constitute as an open world because you get the 100% completion regardless. You have to complete it. So, the open worlds, they contain several objectives. They're themed after a specific NPC, specifically Sonic's friends, and one of them is a newcomer to the franchise. So, one, the first one's themed after Amy, then comes Knuckles, then Tails, then the world I told you about that has to be completed with a 100% story requirement, and then there is finally the new character within the game, which I won't spoil. This will be a spoiler-free review. So, in terms of the story, the story is basic. It's nothing too thrilling. I will say that the characters have more time to flesh out themselves with their one-on-one -on -one bond with Sonic. Like, Amy is kind of left in the background. She doesn't really talk to Sonic. She's more of like, she's just there serving as support. Tails actually has a much more profound story with Sonic. He kind of addresses his... I guess his sidekick area where he doesn't believe he's his own person and he's kind of a burden. This has been something that Tails has always been battling against and I felt like in Sonic Adventure it was the best opportunity where he fleshed himself out how he fought Dr. Eggman and started to become his own person but here he starts to address the past games like with Sonic Lost World and Sonic Forces where he's like I just stood there and cowered and Sonic tries to bring him up and he tries to finally see himself as his own person. Him and Knuckles, uh, Sonic and Knuckles are more or less have that rivalry where they just talk to each other and they're just like Knuckles does have a crisis of identity where he's like I, you, I just envy you, Sonic. Uh, I wish you were... I was more like you. It's. I think it's a really good way to flesh out the characters so they're not one-hit wonders. They're more like they've evolved over the years and become more people, especially when they reference the past games. In terms of the voice acting, I don't know. For some reason, I wasn't a fan of Knuckles and Sonic's voice. I feel like they sound a lot more mature if that, you know, sounds weird. But I, I don't know. The voice acting is service, serviceable. Especially Dr. Eggman, which actually, he has a lot of character here. He's not in a large portion of the game, but he does have more character development here. I definitely like the idea that they make Dr. Eggman seem a lot more human. Like, I may not be the biggest fan of Sonic Lost World, but I like the fact that in that game they showcased how dangerous he is. Like, he's someone you don't want to screw around with, and in this game, they actually do showcase that he is human. And he does have more... You, he has more purpose than just being Sonic's rival. So in that regard, I don't think that's a spoiler, but I just like the way they portray Dr. Eggman. So yeah, so let's talk about the gameplay. Now, the gameplay plays like a much more refined version of Sonic Lost World. I know that's kind of the taboo franchise because a lot of people see it as a very toned-down version of Super Mario Odyssey where they try to replicate the iconic formula. But here it works. It's not as fast. Like, you won't take off and become, like, supersonic right away. You won't be blasting through the environment. Sonic is actually at a moderate speed. He definitely will not run that fast throughout the open world environment. You can boost your... Um, speed using collectibles that you find within the environment you can also boost your health which are rings but this time around you don't lose all your rings if you get hit it has a kind of meter to it and if you get to the maximum amount of rings you actually gain a additional boost to your character so sonic runs much faster this time around he doesn't need 
any type of uh, rings in order to replenish his blue boost meter or defeat enemies. Instead, it recharges once you stop boosting. But he definitely moves a lot slower, especially when you're in the open world. When you're chasing down enemies or when you're in combat, he does move a little quicker, but you'll notice the difference, especially if you played Sonic Unleashed or Sonic Generations, even Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. Like, for example, this is a nitpick, but it's really annoying for me. When he uses the light speed dash, which you have to press down on the left stick, a stick to do, if you miss one of the stages, the cyber space stages, which I'll get into, they completely don't tell you about this. But the light speed dash actually stops you right there when you use it, unlike Sonic Adventure 2 where you can keep going, which I think was a little weird for them to do, but it is what it is, I guess. Now, Sonic does gain new abilities, but they're mostly just combat abilities, such as ability to shoot uh, homing projectiles, recover from being hit, uh, Sonic Boom, which allows him to shoot shockwaves, which we've all seen. And yeah, it's mostly just combat stuff, and the combat is very basic. You just hit the action button to perform a series of really cool moves, build up a combo meter, then you can use the Phantom Dash, which basically turns Sonic into Goku and allows him to just teleport and hurl uh, punches at enemies. It's definitely better than the other combat systems. I know what they're trying to do here, but you know... It works, and the enemy variety is pretty healthy. You'll fight a series of these types of uh, cybernetic enemies, which are pretty cool, and it definitely forces you to use not only the new combat system, but also the parry system, which is very forgiven. If you've ever played a game like Sekiro, you're going to dominate the parry system. It's very forgiven, and Sonic just parries enemies and can dodge very easily. Now, uh, I would say the mini games are the low point of the entire game. There are certain sections in the game where you have to perform, like, you know, actions, like from Sonic Generation. And I felt like they could have cut that stuff out and literally nothing would have been lost. Those were the low point of the entire game. Like, please destroy crates and collect uh, scrap, or please collect these uh, characters within the game. I won't say what they are. And, you know, bring them to Knuckles. I was just like, oh, this again, you gotta do this. I just felt like they really need to abandon that stuff because it's very annoying. But you have to do it in order to progress. Thankfully, they're very limited. Like, I think there are only five of them. I'm not sure, but I, I've been up for a while and sitting on a chair playing Sonic Frontiers for a long time. It's a really fun game, don't get me wrong. It's just, you know, I'm pretty tired. But those, I really wish they would have taken out of the game. Now, in terms of the open world... Uh, the main objective is for you to collect tokens. These tokens are used to free your friends and you can engage in them with optional conversations. Now, you have to collect these tokens in order to engage with them. The problem is if you don't engage in every conversation, you go back in order to speak to them and engage, uh, you know, collect more of the tokens. You can collect almost all the tokens in one run. Sonic isn't limited by any of his abilities. You'll have all the tools you'll need to get all of them. It's basically up to you how you uh, decide to go through with things. But they'll start to talk about stuff you've already figured out, especially with one of the new, the new NPC in the game. Uh, when you talk to them, you'll be like, hey, we're friends now, but in the first part of this game, basically, she's just wishing for you to die in some horrific way because she doesn't believe in you. But it's really weird, and you're just like, okay, so we're doing this now. So the main goal is for you to uh, gather tokens through these very small objective-based uh, activities. Now, I thought this was going to be like Assassin's Creed or Ubisoft games where those games you always felt like oh i gotta do this and i have to do this a bunch of times and then you just click on the map and you go to that location sega actually did a really good job in show in linking all the activities together there is a sense of momentum where you go from one activity to the next so definitely a lot of planning went into making sure that you can go from one to the next so you're constantly going from one place to the next and there are bosses into the environment that share this sense of momentum when you get to a specific area they're there, there's a little cinematic that plays, and you're like, okay. So a lot of it is based around just going from one to the next. So that's where a lot of the fun comes from. Even though you're doing the same thing over and over, it's that much fun. Yeah, the objectives uh, may be not the most exciting. Like you jump rope sometimes, Simon Says, complete the tiles and like, uh, you know, the glowing tiles. But you know, Sega tried some new things with this game, and I think they're better off for it because Sonic games have been getting stale because they constantly repeat the same formula. So they tried something new here, and it's definitely appreciative, and it's clear that they put their effort into it.
Now, the biggest thing is that the assets do look kind of weird, you know? They're not like, uh, you know, they still have the iconic Sonic look and all that, and it doesn't pair well with the environment. I felt like it would have benefited if they tried and went the extra mile to create assets that kind of match naturally to the environment. But maybe they tried and they just felt like it didn't mix well. I don't know. It just does still look weird. Now, the biggest elephant in the room, yes, the texture pop, uh, the pop-in is really bad, not only for textures, but for assets as well, and it definitely affects gameplay, especially if you're trying to get 100%. It's because when you go in uh, through the environment, you're like, oh, there's nothing over there, I'm just going to go over here, but then when you get close to it, you're like, oh, there's something there. And yeah, the map is helpful, but at the same time, every time you have to look at the map to make sure there's something there, and you do have to open up parts of the map. They don't show you everything until you complete challenges. These are marked by a uh, anchor, and they're all marked with a specific number, so if you're having trouble with one, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a YouTube video out there showcasing that. I was planning to do that, but I don't know if I would have the time with God of War Ragnarok. But yeah, they basically have markers, and when you complete all of them, then you open up the fast travel system, which is definitely something I felt like could have been improvement, because you basically have to go through the entire map to get these challenges completed, and if you miss one, you're going to have to go all the way to get it. Even if you unlock the fast travel to Big the Cat, there's a fishing mini game where you unlock a fast travel by getting a specific scroll. And when you get the scroll, you can travel to the elders who basically serve as your leveling hub. You go to them to exchange certain collectibles that you've gathered through the environment, seeds and the natives within the land by rescuing them and collecting the seeds so you can increase your health or your speed. And you have to do this one at a time, which is very annoying. I don't know why there isn't a gauge because there are 99 levels and having to engage, uh, increase your speed one level at a time is freaking annoying. I don't know why there isn't a gauge. And yeah, so um, the fast travel system I felt like should have been improved. The next thing I really was annoyed about was every time you complete a challenge, they do three things. They send out a pulse through the anchor that uh, you got the objective from. Again, the, object the anchor doesn't tell you what the objective is. It just tells you within the area. So it's pretty easy to figure out what it is. Even if you just, you just look around and you'll find out what it is. And usually if you don't know what it is, just use Sonic's new ability, which is the Sonic Cyclone, where you just circle around an enemy holding the Y button on Xbox. I play this on Xbox Series X, and it usually unlocks the item. But yeah, it sends out a pulse. Then it shows you the item that you got. Then it opens up the map. This three-step process, it just takes so long. It just, at first it doesn't take too long, but then it adds up over time. And you're just like, why can't I skip this? And another thing is that why don't they just give you the item? Why do they just plop it down into the environment? Just give it to you. You can buy the items if you want to save time from Big the Cat through the fishing mini game, which I think was very helpful. You can unlock everything but he'll give you enough that you can feel like you can progress to a decent uh, level because you also have to collect chaos uh you have to collect vault keys in order to get the chaos emeralds which are required for each open world in order to progress in the next one the final boss for each area requires sonic to go into super sonic in order to defeat the boss so it does follow that pattern find all the vault keys unlock the chaos emeralds use them to defeat the final boss and each boss is very well designed i did have a great time with the final boss with the bosses for each level and the music was very good for how they complemented each visual environment i believe there are 150 unique tracks some of them are modified from classic sonic games and they're extremely well done i mean i didn't the only one that I kind of really didn't hit like was Tails' open world uh, soundtrack i felt like it was very just annoying like i didn't like tales this world entirely because it's so branched off from the others where you can run for a large part of the open world for each of the other environments here they're separated by islands in tales this world and only one specific grail goes to those islands so again if you missed a challenge and you're trying to open get into the open world you have to go all the way across to a very annoying path a very specific path in order to get to that island and get that thing so it can be annoying in that regard. And yeah, I do believe this game should have been delayed in order to fix that texture pop in. Like, uh, releasing it at the same window of God of War was just, I don't know. Again, maybe it's something I'm not seeing, but I think it was a really stupid idea. They should have delayed the game and fixed the texture pop in because it is not okay. And 
unless someone can fix it for a pre-launch patch, I just felt like it was uh, something that should have warranted a delay. Now, the biggest appeal probably in the Sonic Frontiers experience will probably be the cyberspace areas. These are isolated areas that they definitely took reference from Sonic Forces here, but from the good reasons. Each stage is around, I think the longest is around 2 minutes 45 seconds to get S rank. And they're about 1 to 2 minutes long. They're very short stages that have branching paths and they have 4 missions for you to get 4 vault keys. Uh, S rank in order to complete the stage on a specific uh, time. Uh, you have to get a specific amount of rings in order to complete when you complete the stage. Uh, all red rings and I can't remember the fourth mission but there are four missions. Oh, fourth mission is just to complete the stage I think. But yeah, you get all four and then you get the vault keys and then you just use that to get the Chaos Emeralds. Now this is something that I just have an annoyance generally with Sonic games is that they rely too much on nostalgia. Like ev almost all the stages are modeled after iconic levels and areas within classic Sonic games such as Green Hill Zone, Chemical Plant Zone, Sky Sanctuary, and then Speed Highway. Like they'll just use the same enemy assets and everything and it definitely doesn't play to the game's benefit. I feel like Sonic uh, needs to have his new unique stages. Like you know even yeah it's good to have nostalgia here and there but when you rely too heavily on it it starts to just bleed through and become repetitive. For example, a lot of the stages are designed in a way where you'll instantly recognize them from other Sonic games. Like there'll be stages that are just based off Metal Harbor, based off Speed Highway. It, it's not remix stages like Sonic Generation did. They're literally just like refined in different ways just to complement it. And they're not as fast as the other Sonic games. They're more based on precision. And the red rings are a lot easier to get this time around. They are within your specific path. Like there was only one red ring that really required me to look for it. But I was able to get them pretty easily without even searching. Like it's pretty easy. But yeah, each uh, zone is separated with these cyber space zones. And they're basically labeled where you have to get gears, which you get from either defeating enemies or just finding in the environment then you unlock the stage you go to it and there you go you can also unlock the, fa the f they also serve as fast travel points but only if you discover the entire map like i stated before so in terms of the open world it's decent nothing truly exciting they definitely put work into the momentum and making sure that it's not repetitive so i do appreciate that now, when you get locked into a 2D section within the open world, you have to complete it unless you like kind of break it in the sense that you kind of go in reverse or you purposely fall off the edge. But I found it very annoying that there's no way for you to like just cancel out of it and just walk away from it because once you complete it, it doesn't disappear. It's still there. And some of them do serve as a purpose for like, you know, getting to a specific area much quicker. So some of them serve a purpose, some of them don't, but... Yeah, if you get locked into those 2D sections, you're just going to have to play through them, and sometimes it does get annoying. Now, uh, let's talk about the game's um, performance. Very well done in terms of everything else within the cyber st uh, space stages, but yeah, I mean, I didn't endure any crashes. Like, yeah, the texture popping, like I stated, I wish the game was delayed in order to resolve that, but in terms of, you know, not crashing, that's good. Now there's no new game plus, which is unfortunate. Uh, after completing the game, I was hoping to use my stuff that unlocked through hard game difficulty, but unfortunately you cannot. There is an arcade mode though, where you can play the cyber stages uh, outside from having to go into the main game. And that's good. I mean, nothing wrong with that for people who want to speed run through stages. Sonic games are a big speed run in competition, but it's there. now. I will say that I do wish that they put in a little more effort into the supersonic stuff. Like maybe make them a little more engaging in the sense that you didn't have to rely so much on parrying. Like there are some of the boss fights are cinematic affairs but for the most part they do seem like just parrying encounters where you're just there to wait until the enemy hits you and then you hit them back. But yeah, you know it's decent enough. I do like the idea that they gave Eggman more humanity in this uh, game where they show him as more of a, you know, person than just, you know, Sonic's nemesis, which is good. But overall, it's a good game. I think as a Sonic fan, I really enjoyed it and I think other Sonic fans will enjoy it as well. It came, it saw it, and it 
accomplished what it sought out to do. The soundtrack is good, the gameplay is solid, technical issues need to be resolved with the uh, pop-in, but overall, it's a decent Sonic game for around 14 to 15 hours to complete. If you want to complete everything, which I'm going to do, I'm probably going to take 22, 25 hours if I want to complete the game on hard difficulty, which is likely what I'm going to do. And that's it for Sonic Frontiers. Good game, very well done, highly recommended if you're a Sonic fan. And yeah, that's going to be it for now. I'm really tired. You can tell by the way I look and my hair is disheveled, I'm kind of like bleed red and all that and god of war still uh going from one uh, 14 hour game to a game that's 40 hours uh my hands are killing me killing me either way that's it like the video if you liked it dislike it if you dislike it uh subscribe or patreon if you want to go the extra mile this is am harbinger ready for bed